Is there a way you could share, like take five minutes to share with any filmmakers sure. that have never shot with the iPhone, sure, they want to sure. shoot a feature film? Sure. Um, there are a few things I'd recommend. First off, um, every film is different, so I, I, I sometimes don't like uh, giving advice because if I do, I'm talking about one particular aesthetic. You know what I mean? So, but, but if there are a few things that I would suggest filmmakers uh, do if they're using on the if they're using the iPhone, and one of them is get a stabilizer. If you try to hand hold an iPhone, it really does look terrible. In my eyes, you may want to go for that look, but because the lens is so tiny, no matter how stable you think you might be, the human hand shakes and that translates pretty poorly when it gets onto the big screen. There's a wobbly sort of, uh, this, this very unattractive shakiness that's, um, that can be fixed if you have a stabilizer. So we used a smoothie, which is, uh, that's what it's called. It's a smoothie by Steadicam and Tiffin. And it's really just a little grip. It's about an eight inch grip and, um, and, it, and it's a Steadicam for an iPhone. Uh, so that, and then also sound. You know, sound's very important on any production. I get a lot of uh, Twitter messages and Facebook messages asking me how I recorded on the iPhone. And I say, I didn't record on the iPhone. We, we recorded professionally, separately, and we sunk in post. You know, Iron Strauss had a full, who's our sound recordist, wonderful, um, very talented um, uh, artist. He, he basically was able to, he recorded everything the way he would normally record on any feature film with his digital unit and his hot, very high quality mics, both, uh, you know, both shotgun mics and lavaliers, and then we sunk in post. And that's very important because, you know, uh, audience will, uh, they can accept anything visually because that is sort of like this aesthetic that you're presenting to the audience. But with the sound isn't there, the sound isn't crisp and easy to hear and understand, it's, it's a no-go. So spend money on, on your sound and do it properly. Um, and those are the two things that I would say will get you technically there. And then just in terms of just generally approaching um, iPhone filmmaking, I would say we're at such an early stage of using, you know, almost like devices that aren't cameras to make films that you can do whatever you want. That's the thing. That's uh, we just experimented and we just said what benefits are to be found here. And let's just try different things. You know, you can get this little a device into a, into nooks and crannies that you wouldn't be able to get you know a big camera into you can you can uh, they're so lightweight you can move them easily you can uh, throw them on a drone and, and and get your nice aerial shots you can do whatever you want um, we just you know we we just started experimenting there during production and and tangerine is what resulted but I'm sure you know uh, a filmmaker out there who uh, you know just wants to to um, to, to come up with their own aesthetic, it's very easy to because it's it's vi it's it's quite this thing is is actually uh, look at it, I'm just throwing it around right now. I'm not you can't do that with a 35 millimeter camera. That's the big difference.